Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's call. I am Jamar Thrasher, Press Secretary at the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Before we begin, here is the list of our speakers for today in the order they will speak. We have Secretary Kurt Topper from the Pennsylvania Department of General Services. We have Secretary Patrick McDonald from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. We have Secretary Cindy Dunn from the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. We also are joined by Chuck Hanna, Vice President, National Accounts Constellation, and Kevin Smith, Chief Executive Officer, America's Light Source BP. And we will conclude with a Q&A. Uh, just some rules, housekeeping rules. We ask that each speaker pauses for two or three seconds before they begin speaking, since we are holding this event virtually. After remarks conclude, we will open up the call for reporter questions in the order that we received your RSVPs. Uh, reporters, you are permitted to record the call, and we will have a full video recording available via PACAS after the briefing. And we are also live streaming this via uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection's Facebook page. Now uh, we will begin with Pennsylvania Department of General Services Secretary Kurt Topper. Uh, Secretary Topper, uh, it's up to you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jamar. Um, and uh, thank you, everyone. Um, good morning. I'm Kurt Topper. I'm the Secretary of General Services here for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And uh, it's a real pleasure to be here with all of you today, in, particularly, in particular with Pat McDonald, Secretary of the Department of Environmental Protection, Cindy Dunn, Secretary for DCNR, and our partners, uh, Chuck Hanna uh, from Constellation and Kevin Smith from LightSource. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, I am uh, really, really thrilled and pleased to be able to make this announcement. So today we're pleased uh, to officially announce the Pennsylvania project to utilize solar and light energy or Pennsylvania Pulse. So Governor Wolf has put renewable energy at the heart of the Commonwealth's energy strategy and DGS was happy to take the lead in coordinating and executing an extremely innovative power purchasing agreement that we're here to talk to you about today. The project represents the largest government commitment to solar energy in the nation to date at 191 megawatts. It'll be achieved through seven solar arrays to be built right here in Pennsylvania. Once complete in January of 2023, Pulse will provide roughly half of the electricity used by our state government, and the arrays will supply 100% of the electricity for 434 accounts across 16 state agencies. This clean, environmentally friendly solar energy will lower our annual carbon dioxide emissions statewide by 157,000 metric tons, which is the equivalent of taking more than 34,000 cars off the road. The Commonwealth's investment in this project will not only benefit the environment, but it will also insulate us against further price or future price ins, uh, escalations. We will have a fixed price over 15 years of the agreement, providing us with long-term price protection and budget certainty. There's also an economic benefit to the program. Through the construction, operation, and maintenance of these solar arrays, LightSource BP is creating 400 jobs that will benefit local economies and create tax revenue throughout the state. This new partnership benefits all of us. The project moves Pennsylvania to the forefront of solar energy usage, and it's our latest step toward fulfilling the goals of Governor Wolf's climate change executive order in 2019. That executive order directed the Commonwealth to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 26% by 2030 
by 2025 and by 80% by 2050 compared with 2005 levels. Pennsylvania Pulse will help us achieve that emissions reduction and it exceeds our goal of procuring renewable energy to offset at least 40% of the Commonwealth's annual electricity usage with renewable power generation. And it's now to be cited in Pennsylvania. It's a great latest step forward by an exceptional team with a long track record of accomplishments in this space. We are well on our way to achieving the governor's goals. Over the past six years, DGS has reduced Commonwealth agency electricity costs by close to $30 million through strategic forward year purchases in, in consultation and working closely with the Penn State Facilities Engineering Institute. We're reducing carbon emissions in transportation. We've added nine conventional gas hybrid vehicles to the state procurement contract providing agencies with additional options to improve fuel economy and to reduce emissions uh, within our traveling fleet. And we've also opened an ITQ for electric vehicle charging stations. We're also building higher performance buildings. Today we have 17 new buildings or major renovation facilities projects in construction or renovation that are incorporating high performance building criteria. We are also piloting green leasing strategies in our real estate portfolio. And finally, we have 14 Guaranteed Energy Savings Act or GISA projects in various phases with a total of the port of, with a total value of over $150 million and projected savings of nearly $7 million annually. So I'd just like to thank everyone for their commitment to meeting the green government challenge that Governor Wolf set out for us in 2019. And I couldn't be more thrilled about today's announcement. It really puts us at the forefront of state government. The project shows we can all work together towards a common goal of preserving our environment for future generations. And uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over uh, to the EP Secretary, Patrick McDonald. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Topper. Uh, good to see you as well. Uh, and congratulations to you and your, your whole team in, in general services who made Pennsylvania Pulse happen. Uh, DEP is excited to join others across Pennsylvania, including the City of Philadelphia, the Geisinger Health System, Penn State University, and other organizations in beginning to shift to clean, renewable solar energy. Uh, and we're proud to be part of the largest government commitment to solar energy in the country. Pennsylvania needs to move toward clean, renewable energy as greenhouse gas emissions continue to change our climate. Our state average temperature has risen nearly two degrees since 1901, and the state average annual rainfall has increased by 10%. These changes are bringing about increased swings in extreme weather, uh, including intense rainfall and flooding that communities, businesses, farms, and residents around the state uh, know far too well. A recent DEP climate impacts report shows that unless we reduce emissions, uh, our average statewide temperature will be about five degrees hotter by the middle of this century than it was in 2000. Our average rainfall will increase by another eight to 12%. And according to the latest da data, Pennsylvania generated about 263 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions in 2017 and about 29% of those emissions come from the electric generation sector. Although we've made incremental progress in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, we need to reduce emissions much more and much sooner. Governor Wolf set a goal for Pennsylvania to reduce greenhouse gas emissions 26% by 2025 and 80% by 2050 compared to 2005 levels. Every sector needs to step up to meet this challenge power plants, transportation, manufacturing and commerce, agriculture, construction, and yes, definitely government. One way to approach the uh, one way to is to approach solar energy deployment proactively and thoughtfully. While solar energy is growing around the state, it currently supplies less than 1% of our electricity. We've got about 700 megawatts of installed solar capacity. A DEP report called Finding Pennsylvania's Solar Future shows that if we reach 
11 gigawatts of installed solar capacity by 2030, we can get 10% of our electricity from solar, which will help bring down emissions. Solar energy at an enterprise scale, as P Pennsylvania Pulse demonstrates, will make a big impact. The cleaner the grid is, the cleaner other greenhouse gas mitigations are, so such as switching to electric transportation. There are also possibilities for solar panels to help with future farmland preservation and the repurposing of abandoned mine lands. Initiatives like this are all the more important as we see our alternative energy portfolio standard, which currently requires half a percent of solar uh, sunsets at, at, uh, in May of this year. Economically, clean energy is a leading creator of quality jobs in Pennsylvania. Our 2020 Clean Energy Employment Report shows that solar energy workers were the largest share of the clean energy generation workforce in 2017 through 2019. They held 5,173 jobs. New solar jobs grew 8.3%, much stronger than the overall statewide job growth rate uh, statewide of less than 2%. If we don't move in the direction of clean, renewable energy and the climate continues to heat up, virtually every aspect of life in Pennsylvania will be affected. Our food supply, our power grid, people's health and safety everywhere, and especially in our disadvantaged communities, our jobs and economy, our infrastructure, and our outdoor recreation experiences. The question climate change presents to government leaders is, how can we help Pennsylvanians lessen negative impacts, adapt to changes that are already happening, and leverage new opportunities that may arise for improvement. As today's, as today's announcement demonstrates, that answer can clearly shine down upon, uh, upon us from above our heads. Uh, thank you. And with that, I will turn it over to uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Cindy Adams-Dunn, Secretary of the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Hi, everybody. It's a truly remarkable day today in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And fittingly, it's a very uh, sunny uh, spring day. Uh, great, great day to make this incredible announcement. Congratulations to DGS, DEP, and all the partners who made this possible. I'm very proud to serve as the third co-chair of the Pennsylvania Green Governors Council. And we're uh, pleased to partner with everybody on this. It's We've, we've launched a remarkable set of new projects over the course of the past years that, uh, since we set it up. DCNR is Pennsylvania's conservation leader with 121 state parks and 2.2 million acres of state forest lands. Surprises people to learn that we have 4,700 buildings uh, in the public lands of Pennsylvania. As a conservation leader, we felt it's critical that we provide a demonstration on uh, climate remediation and clean energy and lowering uh, carbon footprint as well as landscape resiliency. We installed our first solar array 40 years ago, but we installed 16 more in the last five years and we plan to add 18 more in the next two years. With this incredible energy buy, this solar energy buy, DCNR will be able to meet 50% of our electricity from solar by 2023. So we'll be able to be half solar by 2023, thanks to this power purchase. It's an incredible uh, project. One main uh, function of our mission is to provide a visible demonstration of clean energy. And we do this on the public lands, on the state parks and forests. We have uh, the solar arrays available to the public. We have electric vehicle charging stations, 17 LEED certified buildings, 24 electric vehicles, including Ranger motorcycles that are electric, very visible to the public, um, and many other demonstrations and interpretation of climate issues and clean energy. And so we'll be looking for ways to help tell the story of this clean energy purchase, because we want to demonstrate to everybody that if the Commonwealth can do this and provide the largest uh, solar purchase, then as individual homeowners, they can make a similar purchase through their electric bill. So we, um, we aim to educate and inform 45 million visitors to the state parks, as well as thousands of people who visit us on social media and through our other communications uh, networks. So we, uh, we wanna use our mouthpiece to tell the story, to really help generate interest in clean energy and give people ideas on how they can participate as well. 
So now it's my pleasure to introduce Chuck Hanna, who's the Vice President of National Accounts and Solution Sales for Constellation. Chuck and his team work directly with the Commonwealth staff to secure this uh, partnership. Chuck? Thank you, Secretary Dunn, and good morning, everyone. Again, I'm Chuck Hanna, Vice President of National Accounts and Solution Sales for Constellation. It's a pleasure to be a part of today's exciting announcement, along with the leadership from the Commonwealth and our project partner, LightSource PP. Just some quick background on Constellation for those who may not be familiar with us. We're a leading provider of electricity, natural gas, and clean energy solutions, including renewables to our customers, which includes homes and businesses across the U.S. We serve around 2 million residential, public sector, and business customers, including about three-fourths of the Fortune 100 companies. Constellation has been proud to supply electricity to the Commonwealth for more than a decade. Now we're thrilled to build on this relationship by helping the Commonwealth foster the development of new renewable energy assets to be built within the state. This project will significantly reduce the Commonwealth's carbon footprint, as the commissioners have outlined, and ultimately help it achieve its aggressive goals to combat climate change. In addition to becoming the largest solar commitment by ever any government entity in the U.S. to date at 191 megawatts, Pennsylvania Pulse also stands as the largest off-site renewable project Constellation has implemented for any single customer. As Secretary Topper described, the solar energy produced from the project will help the Commonwealth reduce emissions with its energy use by an estimated 157, 800 tons of metric, excuse me, 157,800 metric tons of carbon dioxide annually. And to put this in perspective, he mentioned that there's 34,000 cars equivalent that would be removed in terms of emission reductions. And then when you multiply that over the 15 year term of this agreement, you get a sense for the massive positive environmental impact that this project will bring to the state. At Constellation, we pride ourselves on simplifying very complex energy challenges for our customers. And the role we play in this project really exemplifies that commitment. As part of the transaction, Constellation sources energy and renewable energy certificates, or RECs, from light source BPs projects within the state. We then sell the power and project-specific RECs to the Commonwealth's retail accounts with all of these charges presented on each of the 434 accounts regular electric utility invoice. Through this contracting model, Constellation manages the risks and complexities associated with the offsite power purchase agreements while allowing the Commonwealth to unlock the economic and sustainable benefits of a large scale offsite renewable project. I can share that the Constellation team is generally thrilled that the Commonwealth's commitment will enable solar to be built right here in Pennsylvania. We have a long history and a significant presence in the state in terms of both our employees and our customers, as well as numerous generation assets that our parent company, Exelon Generation, owns throughout the state. On a personal note, as a longtime resident of the state, I'm extraordinarily proud to be part of the project and long-term environmental benefits it will provide to the Commonwealth. And to close, I'd like to again commend and congratulate the Commonwealth both for the project and for their proactive and aggressive approach to addressing climate change. And thank you again to the project developer, LightSource BP, for their partnership throughout this process. It takes a lot of people and groups working closely together to make a complex project like this come to become a reality. We look forward to Pennsylvania Pulse reaching commercial operation in 2023 and we're very excited about the environmental benefits it will bring to Pennsylvanians for years to come. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Kevin Smith, Chief Executive Officer, Light Source PP America. Thank you again. Great. Uh, thank you, Chuck. And j just a quick overview on who Light Source BP is. Uh, we're a, a worldwide uh, leader in, in developing, investing, and, and owning large scale solar energy facilities. And we're really pleased to be involved in the project here in Pennsylvania. Um, uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is a leader in our nation's battle to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, uh, which are affecting the lives and the livelihoods of Pennsylvanians and all Americans across the country as we deal with the results of climate change. 
Uh, at Lightsource BP, we're proud to play a role in, in helping Governor Wolf, Secretary Topper, Secretary McDonald, and Secretary Dunn meet and in reality for this project uh, really exceed the, the Commonwealth's ambitious green gov challenges to obtain 40% of its electricity from clean energy generated in the state. What the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is doing is a model for other governments in the U.S. to address climate change and usher in a new sustainable era, bringing measurable job and economic benefits to its people while reducing emissions that lead to healthier citizens. Lightsource BP is committed to supporting the Commonwealth's clean energy goals and our ownership uh, where we, we actually own and operate the facility long term is a great model that we think should be replicated across the U.S. Um, we intend to own this facility, operate it on a long term basis and become a, a member of the local business community that we serve. Our, our eastern U.S. office is located in Philadelphia, uh, where we head up our development activities on the east eastern half of the U.S. And we're, we currently have four solar facilities totaling more than 90 megawatts operating in Pennsylvania. That includes the Penn State facility uh, that's delivering 25% of its annual electricity requirements. Uh, LightSource BP has a deep commitment to delivering safe, clean, and affordable energy, as well as maximizing the environmental sustainability and positive social impacts of each of our projects. The seven projects that we will build for this uh, activity here um, will supply the Commonwealth uh, with, with tremendous amount of electricity, generate clean energy, reduce harmful greenhouse gas emissions that are affecting the health of Pennsylvanians. The, the, it will create jobs, bring millions of dollars of investment to the local community, uh, conserve area biodiversity, and provide a much needed diversified source of income for farmers who are leasing their land. The project will help grow the Pennsylvania solar market and will create rewarding careers for current and future generations in solar energy. The projects will employ over 400 workers in total across the seven sites during construction, with the majority coming from central Pennsylvania. At LightSource BP, we are committed to maximizing local benefits at our projects, including a commitment to bring to hire local residents for construction. We, we actually include stipulations in our construction contractor agreements to maximize local labor and expect more than 80% of the labor will come from surrounding Pennsylvania communities. This project is a tremendous example of a private public partnership that is fostering renewable energy development while diversifying the Commonwealth's energy portfolio and increasing security with locally generated homegrown power. Uh, with that, uh, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Jamar, who will open the Q&A portion of today's discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. We will now begin the Q&A portion of the press conference. You will see the on deck reporter on the chat feature, and I will announce the reporter's name, inviting you to unmute and ask your question. Please mute yourself after you have had your question answered. We also ask that you don't use the chat feature to ask a question, as we won't be answering questions via chat. We have dozens of RSVPs, and we will get to as many reporters as we can. So we have a 10 minute Q&A, NBC 10, followed by Sean Soro at LMP Lancaster Online. NBC 10. We'll now take a question from Sean Sorrow. Sean, request to unmute, please. Yeah, hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'm curious, can you talk about exactly where these arrays will be constructed? Is this on uh, farmland and um, what, uh, how many acres uh, total will these projects be installed across? Um, Jamar, I can probably take that one. Um, there's uh, six counties uh, across uh, central Pennsylvania. Um, the projects are in various stages of development right now, so the exact locations are, are uh, in our permitting applications. 
Um, predominantly, they are on farmland, and we're 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 uh, leasing land on a long term basis from farmers. Typically, you know, thirty plus year leases. Um, a facility of this size, um, I don't have the exact number on on uh, on the uh, on the acres of each of the individual seven projects, but it's approximately uh, 1,800 to 2,000 acres total across the seven projects. And as I said, um, largely all on farmland, uh, leased from local farmers. Thank you. We'll now take a question from Fox 43 followed by Sierra Darville from WJAC-TV. Fox 43, please unmute. Hi, my name is Greg Perez from Fox 43. Do you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, so my question for you uh, is, how will farmers and their land benefit from this change? And is there a timeline for when those farmers will reap those benefits? Sounds like another one for me, Jamar. Uh, I'll jump in there. Um, well, they, they'll start pretty quickly. I mean, we've signed options uh, with the with the farmers. Uh, once the projects start construction, is when they start their lease payments. Uh, the the lease payments um, typically are a premium uh, to what it would what what they'd earn as as uh, from farming that facility. Uh, and so they a lot of times they use that that uh, revenue to supplement their additional land that they're farming. So it provides them with a div diversified a source of revenue, a bit of a bit of uh, revenue from the solar facility, which is ongoing, regardless of you know the weather and 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 droughts or rain or or whatever. And then they continue farming the balance of their of their land uh, and 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 stay in the family business. So it's a really nice diversification. That that those lease payments come like clockwork. Um, typically, they're paid quarterly, um, starting when we start construction and through the life of the facility. Um, like I said, uh, typically, we're looking at 30 plus years uh, for leases. At the end of the lease payment, uh, the end of the uh, period of the project, we return the land uh, to farmland, remove the facility completely, and, and the farmer can then decide to continue to farm the, the, the land as he had had in the past. We'll now take a question from WJAC News. Please unmute. Okay, we'll take a question from WPVI ABC6. Please unmute. Okay, we will now take a question from W, I'm sorry, KDKA. If you were on the line, please unmute. Okay, we will take a question from Frank Coomer with the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, yeah, sure. So I have a, a two-part question, uh, and if you answered this uh, during the press conference, I apologize, I didn't catch it. What is the cost per kilowatt hour, or however you're going to break this down, and how does that compare to current power costs? And uh, secondly, with, uh, of the 400 jobs, I'm guessing most of those are in construct construction. Do you know how many uh, jobs will be remain once the arrays are built? Uh, yes, I had a little bit of trouble hearing the first part of the question. I'll 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 answer uh, what I heard, and then we'll uh, and then we can we can have a follow up. Um, yeah, the 400 jobs are primarily during the construction period. Um, there are seven facilities. They will be um, sequenced over a period of probably around 18 months, um, providing that kind of uh, 400 job level. Uh, probably about 75 jobs per. Per project, um, and and yes, as I mentioned, primarily the jobs are in construction during operations. Um, there's a handful of of jobs in in maintenance uh, on the facility. Um, you know, uh, uh, electrical and and mechanical maintenance of the facility. Um, uh, 
uh, agricultural uh, uh, clear, uh, uh, grass cutting, those kinds of things. Um, but we also have a significant uh, budget uh, during that period, kind of multi-million dollar uh, budget for you know snow removal issues, you know other things are related to the facility, insurance, um, substantial amount of of uh, real estate taxes uh, that are paid from the facility. Um, so there's a significant amount of money that we'll continue to spend in the community um, as, we move, as we move forward. Um, oh, okay, I'm sorry, uh, can, you, can you hear me better now? Kind of. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can, can you just state the cost per kilowatt hour or however this is broken down and compared to current power rates? Well, we don't usually release the the our power rates, and I'll, you know we'll we'll uh, you know I think under the agreements uh, with uh, with Constellation with with the Commonwealth, um, um, it's not it's not up to us to release those prices, but it's very competitive. Solar energy is now amongst the the lowest price costs of energy across the U.S., even in 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 areas that aren't quite as sunny as you know California and Arizona. Um, so it's it's a cost savings. Uh, what's interesting is that that pricing stays flat uh, for the full 15 year period. So regardless of what's happening with, with energy prices, oil prices, uh, uh, natural gas prices, we're offering, we offer 15 year flat pricing for the full term of the contract. So substantial uh, savings in, in energy cost as well as, as certainty on, on prices going forward. We'll have time for two more questions. We will go to Jamie Martinez, Spotlight PA, followed by Stephen Caruso from the Penn Capital Star. Hi there. Jamie. Oh. Hi. Um, can you talk a little bit about what types of protections, or I guess maybe protections isn't the right word, but um, what is in the contract for 30 years from now when the arrays are being dismantled and removed, um, remediation? What what type of work is going to go ha into making sure that that land is returned to the state you're finding it in uh, when you build the arrays now? Yeah, the 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 lease payments um, with the landowners and and also typically our our agreements with the counties in which the projects are permitted. Um, we have the uh, there's an obligation to remove the facilities. Um, there's really no no remediation required. It's really just removal of equipment. Um, the land will will really regenerate during that period because there's no harmful chemicals. There's no um, no issues with regards to the solar facility. So we remove the facility completely at the end of end of uh, end of the uh, the period of the project. Um, in some cases, the farmers you know, could decide to extend and we could continue to generate electricity. But if, if in fact they decide at the end of the lease at 30 years, we remove all the panels, substantial amount of value in, in the recycling materials, aluminum, glass, copper, et cetera. Um, so in essence, it, it you know, there is, is real, real value in recovering that facility. We remove the panels, remove the electrical equipment. The only thing that's, that's uh, um, really in the ground is the, is the posts you, if you will, um, that that support the the uh, solar panels, those are removed. Also, uh, recoverable um, from a from a salvage value. So, um, at the end of the of the period, we return it completely to farmland, and and the farmer can decide to to move forward with farming activities. Is Stephen Caruso on the line? for our final question. If not, we will move to Rachel McDevitt. Rachel, are you on the line? Please unmute. Hi, yes, I'm here. Um, I, was, I have a few questions, Let's see if we have time. Um, how? What metric are you using to measure that this is the largest government commitment to solar energy? Uh, hi, Rachel. Um, the largest one that we're aware of uh, from talking to uh, uh, colleagues in other states um, it, it is is in the 30 to 50 million, uh, uh, 30 to 50 uh, megawatt range. Um, uh, the largest one I'm aware of in California talking to uh, my counterpart there is is uh, in the 30 megawatt range. Um, uh, so uh, we're we're pretty confident that at 190, uh, we're 
we're uh, uh, we're well out in front of uh, of other state governments. Thank you, and and I apologize if I missed that at the beginning. My connection has not been great. Um, are there upfront costs from Pennsylvania in this, or and and where would that funding come from, if so? Uh, thank you. That's a great question. This is this is part of the the truly innovative approach that that the Commonwealth has taken here. Um, you know, we uh, the, the, there there are no significant upfront costs or capital costs on the capital. You know, from from the Commonwealth, uh, we are getting this done via an advanced power purchasing agreement. So effectively, by making the commitment to purchase our power uh, from Constellation with the generation coming from uh, light source, um, uh, we, we are effectively uh, uh, helping this uh, solar development to happen within the state. Um, locking in Commonwealth pricing, competitive pricing for our energy. Um, and uh, we're doing it all through uh, through the dollars that we would have spent anyway uh, for, for, for electricity generation. And were any other sites other than farmland considered for these contracts? Did you look at alternative sites like brownfields or capped landfills, things like that? Uh, that one I'll have to defer to Constellation or or Light Source. And this will be our last question. Thank you. Okay, I'll I'll um I'll jump in there. I mean, and and on the last just on the last question, you know, 100% of the investment um, is is from Light Source BP. We 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 build on and operate, so we uh, um, on the on the basis of the long term uh, power purchase agreement. Uh, that the secretary identified. Um, we then uh, invest our, invest light source BP money, raise additional commercial lending into the facilities. So there's no investment required by the state of state of Pennsylvania, by Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, uh, uh, regarding the uh, alternative sites, it, you know, we we we're developing projects across the U.S. We are looking at some greenfield and uh, and uh, brownfield sites. Um, uh, um, you know. Uh, Typically, I think in the Midwest, uh, uh, farmland seems to be one of the one of the more popular sources. Uh, farmers really are soliciting us to to come onto their land to provide them with additional revenue sources. Other sites can have um, other issues that we have to deal with. Some remediation issues could cause difficulties in financing. But we are across the U.S. We are looking at various opportunities on both uh, farmland as well as brownfield sites. Uh, just so happens in the in this uh, situation here, and um, we had access to su substantial amount of farmland uh, due to the really demand from farmers to help uh, supplement their income. Thank you, Kevin. We'll now move to the wrap up. Jamar. Thank you, Kevin and Troy. Thank you, everyone. That is all the time we have for today. I like to thank our speakers and all of the reporters who joined us today. Have a great day and stay safe. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Ready. Thank you.